hottest young nigga in the streets, and it looks and, bigger than. And guess what? It, it's like it's like when um when when the Coca Cola brand acquires another powerhouse. And then they merge. You know what I'm saying? Game. Like, yeah, now you you acquired them because they shit is hitting. It's like when Mark Zuckerberg bought um Instagram. Like Instagram was already popping. So but but Facebook is like, let me just acquire that and make us stronger. That's what niggas did with the game, bro. Niggas didn't niggas didn't like like create me, bro. Like I I created myself in Cedar Block in Compton, gang banging and, and doing my mixtapes and going to the CVS to print CDs and going to fries to get the CD burner. And I became the hottest nigga with me and my brother and all my niggas and our whole movement in Compton. Niggas just acquired the hottest nigga in the streets at that time. I get what you said, my brother. I love you for coming on here. I know you gotta go to the studio. I'll be out there soon. I'm coming out there for Khaled is uh they're giving him the Walk of Fame star. So he asked me to speak. So I'll be in LA next week. I'll look you up. You heard me? Yeah, no, nah, I got you. You know I love you, bro. Yeah, yeah, I heard you. You know I love you, man. I'm always saying when you need me. And again, this was just me talking to my brother because I seen you on. I'm like, let me see what Joe on. And we, you know, we chopped it up like we always do. I love you, bro. Hey, I loved it, man. Thank you for coming through the big, big show, man. It's the biggest in the land. You know. Love you, hey, my brother. You already know, man. The game, Illuminati, baby. man. We eat. Illuminati, you never know. And you don't know who I know. That's how we keep the shit. Hey, yo, Rich. Let me get one of those, uh, another yalla. See, some people smoke crack. Some people smoke weed. Some people gamble. Some people smoke cigarettes. Fat Joe drinks a whole lot of soda. It's a problem. It's probably going to finish me sooner or later. But what can I say? But that's the game, the living legend. If you didn't know, uh, game, when he first fell out with 50 and all of them, it was because 50 was like, yo, you got to go against Fat Joe and him. And he said, yo, I'm not doing that. I fuck with Fat Joe. He's my brother. And so, you know, sometimes I feel guilty about that because if you ask me, they had a great thing going. Uh, but like game says, he's filthy rich still. He don't give a fuck. He good. And so um, the popsicles come later. The popsicles is legend. They know you well. They know, yo, Joe, is the popsicles. They know you well. Popsicle they know kid. I got the popsicle kick. And so um, the book, I'm going to unveil the book cover tomorrow. Don't do it now, right? No, sir. <laughs> tomorrow, I, I got the book cover. Oh, yeah, let me take it. You the might, book you, of you Jose. Might wanna, you might want to Shit like legendary. I tell My you. book is unfuck with a bull. Okay? And so if you think Fat Joe lies a lot or tells a lot of stories, you will be mesmerized by this book. This shit is not a game from A to Z. I am dropping too many gems, too much knowledge from when I was born to now. Too much legendary shit in this book. Book of Jose. So tomorrow I'm going to put it up to cover. Y'all can pre-order shit like that. Uh, Took a week off, um, recharged, told the wife, listen, man, please, because the minute I went down to the crib, she was like, all right, we're coming, we're getting ready. I said, your mom, listen, ma, no disrespect in the universe. Can I get a week by myself to recharge? And so I don't know about you guys, but I've never went on a guy trip. A bunch of guys, this, this. I never did none of that. And so I finally, I worked so hard. I said, I need to recharge. Can I go just relax to myself? Because when you've been with somebody so long, it's normal shit to argue over a pillow, argue over the doorknob. The lady ain't cleaned the crib right. The this, this. And so I didn't want none of that shit. I said, yo, I'm going to sit on my couch watch Netflix, get my plans together, how I'm going to attack with business. And boy, is business great. 
Business is phenomenal. We can't make the shit up. Shout out my brother Raul on the check-in. And so the shit's so crazy because I took a week to relax myself and charge up. And you know, when you be with women for so long, uh, somehow they know how to catch your vein. They know how to tell you some shit to get you stressed the fuck out. I started a new rule with the white boy. I said, do me a favor. If you're going to say some crazy shit to me and you're going to have me like this and shit wired up, do it around 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. Don't do it no more at 12, 1 o'clock when I'm just about to go to sleep where I got to go to sleep with the mad shit. I don't want that shit. I don't want, I want to sleep with the angels. I don't want to go in the bed frustrated. And so my man, I don't want to tell you who my man the other day, he's telling me he argued with his wife over some shit. He went to the restaurant. She told him she wants some steak and some beef. He forgot it. This, th these guys are high school sweethearts. Been together for 30 years. They fighting over some shit because he forgot this. It's just fucking incredible. To keep a relation together is fucking incredible. It's, 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 and so, you know, you gotta, you gotta take, I took a week off. I ain't go to no clubs. I ain't do nothing. I ain't do nothing, no other type of shit. I went there. My brother Richard Barber was with me. Shout out to shit that went to heck. You see this shit. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to yourself, man. You know what I'm saying? And I said, you know, <laughs> don't take care of yourself, man. Take care of your health. Take care of your health. Take Take care of your health. Take care of what the fuck is Brian saying? Peace, peace, Joe. Let him know when the drop for the book is. I don't know when the drop is. Tomorrow, I'll let him know. I think the drop is in like November, December or something. I'm not sure. I know it's the best fucking book any hip-hop dude ever fucking wrote. I promise you that shit. If you over here and you watch this show and you say, yo, Joe's one of the best storytellers. Do you know what the fuck this book is like? This shit deal with every faction, every shit you could think of. This ain't no, these people ain't, come on, man. You gotta be fucking kidding me. These people, these people don't, <laughs> they can't talk that shit like me. It's fucking impossible. It's, shout out to the Grammys yesterday. Uh, Sis and Doja Cat, I was very, very happy for the sisters you know, winning this award and they deserved it and that record was a hit and them two girls, they so talented and everybody who won the award, I don't know, could somebody tell me who won the main award? The main award was a guy, John Baptiste, right? Is that his name? Could, some, could somebody tell me and confirm that that's his name, John Baptiste? Can someone tell me if that's the right name? Jean Baptiste? Yo, bro, let me tell you something. Don't start book beef, because you you could pull up anybody's book. Like right now, I see somebody, yo, this Quincy Jones with it. Nobody's shit gonna be like mine. Nobody. Impossible, puppy. Impossible. And these guys just ain't, they just ain't lived that what I live. You know what I'm saying? It's impossible. It's an impossible thing. My, my, my story, my buildings where I grew up is so rusty. It looked like fucking Vietnam. I dare you Google the Bronx in the 70s and 80s. You, you, you don't have, so John Bartiz, right? Talented man, loved this speech and all that. But I personally, with no disrespect, don't know much about John Baptiste. He was nominated for 16 Grammys. Now, I don't want to say some shit to get people mad, but I don't really know this guy. I'm going to keep it a buck with you. And so last night, here it comes again. Remember 50 Cent won? He sold 
30 million records that he lost to somebody we never heard of in our life. I lost Lean Back to the Black Eyed Peas before they even had uh, the white girl, Fergie. We lost all the way up. Remy went to jail. Joe went to jail. They come back all the way up. The whole world celebrate. We lose the chance to rap him. Come on, bro. Right? And so all these years, I'm, I, I dislike the Grammys for the type of shit they be doing, right? And so last night, the brother won uh, John Baptiste Award of the Year, the album of the year, the, the biggest shit, right? But you guys don't really know John Baptiste like that. You do not know that. And so he's a great musician, and I don't know if you play his shit all day. Like, I'm keeping it a buck. Like, I would have took her winning the album of the year, Snow Allegra. You know, it was some real R&B shit there. It was some real popping shit that we hear on the radio every 10 seconds. And when that shit, impression, we listen to that shit 100,000 times. It, it's almost like Ella May. Remember when she had booed up, you would listen to that shit for hours. I don't know a record with no disrespect that played, and I know I sound like a hater, that played uh, Jean Pontis. But <clears throat> last night I watched that whole Grammys and I figured it out. Their original clout chase, their shock and awe moment, it happens every year. They give somebody the award that we barely know and we didn't know. Everybody sounds it. Can't take nothing from the man. He put his heart and soul in his music. Salute him. God has blessed him. But they've been doing this shit. So when you see artists saying, yo, I'm, I'm retiring, or I, I boycott the, the thing, and you be like, yo, it's, it's like, I don't think this is like a mistake. How about I realize this is not a mistake. This is, I dissect, dissect it to the, to, to the point of, oh shit, they do this shit on purpose. This is their form of clout chasing. This is their form of, holy shit, Fat Joe gonna talk about tomorrow how her got jerked or Snow Allegra or some of these other artists, that, you know, the Doja Cats of the world and all. And so this is the shit they be doing. Is it more diverse now? It looks like they're sharing the time. Hey, the whole fucking world is more diverse now. The whole world. We saw the Oscars where they included more black people, more Latino. I mean, if you want to have a true reflection of America, you have to be diverse. You have to have inclusion. And so me... Oh, uh, I'm old fashioned. I'm old fashioned. I make music, and when I make it, if it goes number one, it's because it, it it's supposed to be number one. It's not no gimmick, no politics, pulling strings. That shit is out of here. When you felt it, when you heard "Lean Back in Your Soul" or "All the Way Up" or "What's Love," you felt that special shit that talks to your soul. I'm not going to be out here kissing ass, kissing babies, uh, doing speeches and all. Man, it's so much fuckery, right? It's so much fuckery that this shit is crazy. If you knew what I knew, you really, you'd be like, and it's sad because as artists, we hear and we, and, and, and you know, yo, four fifth, hocus four fifth. And it's sad because you get up there and you win and you like to get acknowledged and you think about, you know how hard it is to be an artist? And so, the, we, 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 you know, you put your heart and your soul in the music and you promote it and you put life stories and your passion and your soul and then somebody judge it and then somehow when they give you the award, you feel so great to be acknowledged. But a lot of this shit be straight bullshit. It, it was some bullshit. I don't know what to tell you. I didn't even like 50 Cent at the time. I'm at the Grammys. He's nominated. 
His first album sold 30, 40 million. He lost to somebody I don't know. But now at the time, I said, that's some bullshit. And every year I watch the Grammys, I go, that's some bullshit. Every year it happens, that's some bullshit. So I realize, because I watched the whole shit last night. Kick Capri, what's up, my brother? Incredible dream champs. So I watched the whole shit last night, and I said, you know what? These guys been cloud chasing for that. They know what to do. They pull up, up the biggest awards. They jerk. They got, like, they jerk the Justin Bieber, who he's supposed to win. He sold 100 million distances and give it to somebody we never heard of. But that's not by mistake. I thought it was by mistake. Maybe they, that's a systemic thing. That's what they do. And so, you know, we all, we can talk as much as we want, but we go to the Grammys with the flyers fucking outfits. We, we put all our money and all that shit. And then we go to the fucking BT Awards with a hoodie on and shorts. And so that's the type of bullshit that, you know, that, that, that's, we always want to get accepted by people who don't really fuck with us. It, it, it's, it's, it, is what a, it is what it is. And so, um, shout out to Fantasia. Yesterday she, she put some shit up where she was singing her ass off. Something special about how she sing. Everything about Fantasia is special. And she, she just feel like you gotta love her, right? So she's singing and out of nowhere. She know for a fact when, it's, when there's no cameras around, her mom gonna jump in. So she get it from her mama. And so her mama jump in and they start singing together. You gotta look this video up it's on TikTok, Instagram. The shit is amazing. And that's real singing. Not the shucking and jiving shit. I don't know. Listen, guys. Shout out to Nasty Nas. They let him perform on the Grammys. Uh, great job. I wish he would have really did New York State of Mind. So they played the, the music and they faked them out. And, and, and then they turned it into some other shit. Now, uh, I would have wanted him to do something from Illmatic. And, you know, things that happen with artists and people, right? So you say uh, Amber Rose, one of the most beautiful women in the fucking planet Earth. She goes and gets tattoos here. Um, A.B. quits uh, uh, Super Bowl team because he want to be out there with the Kanye's and, and doing it. Like, it's just crazy shit, right? And so, like, Nas... Whether he likes it or not, he's one of the greatest artists ever. Top five in anybody's top five. But to me, it feels like he doesn't like doing what he knows we want him to do. We want him at it. You, you get, I mean, you're not going to perform in the Grammys every year. So you get one time to do a collage to do some of your songs, but you don't do nothing off Illmatic? Like, I, I probably listen to Illmatic every day. Like, and so, um, I wish he would have did New York State of Mind. You know what I'm saying? And, and, uh, it, it just, that's, that's just, uh, how the shit go down. But the Lakers is, uh, that, not, I gotta talk about the Lakers, but, um, the Grammys was good. I mean, a lot of money put into it. Beautiful, uh, great performances. Hey, even Lil Nas X, great performance. Uh, Jack Carlo came out with him. Um, DJ Drama, DJ Drama, and Tyler the Creator won that. That uh. That Gangsta Grills real album with the Tyler, they won. Um, and so uh, the Grammys was cool. A lot of, I don't know, 
you know, I, I don't know. I don't want to sound like I'm hating them, but, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, they like historically to collaborate. You know, they take somebody hot as hell, somebody who's incredible, who's on fire, and get them to perform with some whack dude from 40 years ago, and some violinist from, you know, that shit played out already. It's, 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 it's 2022, it's, it's, it's a hybrid. You know, uh, you know, it, you know, I don't know what y'all want me to do with that shit. What happened? Yeah, yeah, Hocus was on it. It's his birthday? Hocus 4 fifth. what's up, my brother? Happy birthday. And so what I'm saying is, no, they've been doing that forever. They'll take a Michael Jackson and make him perform with uh, Tony Bennett with, you know, like, I don't know, man. Um, <laughs> nah, man, I don't know. Uh, 54 years since the murder of Martin Luther King, and I haven't seen enough on Instagram about it or out there. But it's been 54 years um, since the murder of Martin Luther King. And he said, don't allow anybody to make you feel like nobody. You see what I'm saying? Don't allow no anybody to make you feel like nobody. You got to know your self-worth. He was saying this back in the 60s. To me, the greatest American ever. Um, the type of shit he went to what Jasmine Sullivan won. And anybody in that category right there could have won, and I'd have been like, <laughs> and so uh she deserves it. That's real music. That's good music. They kept it real with her. They kept it real with her. And every time I look at these shows, I wonder who fucking votes for who. Who gives the shit the who? And so I don't know. Uh you know, we want people to accept this. We don't even know who we want to accept us. Shout out to some Rob. It's a new spritzer. What, what it says on the box so we can get the right shit. To shout out to my brother Spritz. Buff. Spritz. You know, the Fat Joe show will be on TV this year in the big channel. We already signed the deal. My partner is Sean P. Diddy Combs, Mr. Love. Fat Joe has a TV show coming out with Kenya Barris, the Torero Brothers, that will be on Showtime, the series of my life. Fat Joe has an animation show that's going to be on TV. Actually, two. And so we're really working. Don't get us fucked up. So next year, when you see shit all over popping up all over, you're going to be like, damn, Joe doing this. Nah, I'm doing my motherfucking thing. Rashid Bel Asta, Salam Aleikum, my brother. It's Ramadan, right? Salam Aleikum, my brother. Bismillah. Rahman Alayhim. Gifah Alek. Alhamdulillah. Shh, we'll be out there in Saudi soon, too, right? We, we touching that Saudi um, in June. We're going to Saudi Arabia, bro. Rashid, you got to fly over from Dubai to uh, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, Hocus. But what you got to understand, guys like me, it don't come easy. God bless us, but we know we got a different journey. You know, I want to take the elevator up, but they make me climb the mountain. <laughs> you ever see some shit like that? You know you believe belong on the top. It's a, it's a, and motherfuckers take the elevator up. That's the way, that's the smartest way. I want to take the elevator up, but sometimes they make guys like me climb the mountain. You ever heard of some shit like that? And so we got to climb them out. We've been fucking these people up for the last two, three years on this shit. Fucking them up. Giving out 100000 and giving out all type of money on this show and stocks with Cash App and, and we done interviewed. I don't even want to start who we interviewed. We done interviewed everybody from Mike Tyson to fucking Dr. Fowler. I, I, I fucking give up. How many motherfuckers we done interview on this show? Shout out to Wild Cherry Pepsi. Been with us since day one. Ciroc, day one. Cash App, partner. You know what I'm saying? Cash App, it's time to re-up. Gotta talk. 
Bring your freak fun ass people to the table. Huh? I was talking to Brad about that today. Yeah, yeah. It's time to re up, Cash App. Let's stay focused. Let's stay focused, Cash stay App. Focused. Let's stay focused. Yo, Dane County Shoppers. Uh, rest in peace, Arnold Mad Dog. Rest in peace, Per. Um, TAT. Y'all, Atheon. You don't know who I know. You motherfucking right. Slim Fat Joe is on the check in. We are not for play, guys. We are not for play. So I said the book of Jose tomorrow, I'm going to reveal it. Uh, Lakers not making the playoffs. Oh, man. This is hard. When, when the season started and you seen the picture of AD, LeBron, Russell Westbrook, Carmelo Anthony, and who else was on there? Everybody. Was it Dwight Howard or something? Dwight Howard. Hold on. Hold on. Um, Monk. Um, Fuck Monk and all of them. Like, l- listen, let me tell you something. Fat Joe, I don't know if you people know. I know I sound narcissistic on here, but I got to tell you the truth. I coach, shout out to Mousy at the Rucker, and I won seven championships. We didn't win that by luck. Everybody came to beat the terror squad. And so if it's two and a half minutes in the game, I'm down by two, and fucking Monk is dribbling like he's gone. I'm running on the court to put time out. Get the fucking ball out this bozo's fucking head. If we don't win the next five games in a row, we don't make the playoffs. LeBron gave him 39. He ran out of gas air the last game when they lost. He should have beat New Orleans. But it's three minutes. It's two down. Monk is doing all this shit. Yo, bro, if you don't give that fucking ball to Anthony Davis and get the fuck out the way, It's unbelievable. I don't play that shit. So people who play with me, they know how passionate I am about it. And I don't give a fuck. If I give John Strick the ball and he scores and they can't check him, I'm giving it to him 20 times in his row until he tells me, yo, coach, I can't breathe no more. Rest in peace, John Strick. I don't have air. Or Dorian or Kareem or any. That's me. I'm the cheese. If you see me in the video game, I'll keep kicking the motherfucker with the same move It's going to make me win. I don't give a fuck. Lakers trying to make the playoff. You got Anthony Davis there who's allegedly, allegedly one of the top whatever it is in the league. Give him the fucking ball. Move out the way. Or at least let Russell, Russell Westbrook pull the 12th round. You know how fighters lose in the whole fight. And they come to 12th round and they start doing the flurries, trying to steal the fight. It's too late, but he showed up the last five games, scored 20. I'm a Memphis Grizzlies fan now. Don't say that too loud. Y'all Rich said he's a Memphis Grizzly uh fan now. He full of shit. Just for the playoffs. I'm a loyal, I'm loyal to the end. People know that. But I'm hey y'all, I want to shout out my brother. Uh, Trick Daddy. Trick Daddy got a cooking show. It's called Bitch, I Got My Pots. And let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. And this is borderline disrespect, what I'm going to tell you. Trick Daddy. Some people got cooking shows and they make the shit for them. You know when we do the Wendy show and the shit be chopped up and somebody come and explain that this. Trick Daddy cooks in your face. Cuts the shit up. Cooks in your face. The man made a comp stool. When I tell you this was possibly the best fucking stew I ever ate in my life. I'm not lying to you. And let me tell you what's crazy. I taste the stew. It was so fucking incredible. I went to my mother and father's house. Now, you got to understand, my mother and father, every time I go see them, and I'm sure my mom's is on here, they cook for me. There's no way around it. I don't give a fuck if I'm on a strict diet, whatever. The one thing they know is they cannot put pork on the food. So my father sits me down and said, you know, he asked me, yo, you in that religion? I said, no, Pop. I'm not not Muslim. I'm not in a religion. I just don't eat pork, right? But, 
my father, when I get to my mother's house right after trip, he makes a shrimp stew. Same day. I mean, 20 minutes after. I leave trick daddy's. I go over there. He's cooking. Guess what he's cooking? Shrimp stew. Now, Trick was really, really mad that he was missing one ingredient, which was the okra. When I get to my father's, he got the okra in the stew. But long story short is I ate my father's stew. It was good. Don't get it fucked up. My pops is older now. He cooks incredible. But that, it wasn't fucking with that Trick Daddy stew. For me to tell you, the trick daddy stew was better than my father's stew. It's a real fucking problem. Like, because my father gets down. He gets busy. But that boy, trick daddy stew, that comp, that was the right season, the right salt, the right pause thickness, the right man. That shit was so incredible, man. And listen, Ramadan Mubarak, to everybody who's fasting, I think it's nighttime, at least here. You can eat now. You can eat. Uh, listen, man, this is the big, big show. Shout out to the game for showing up over here. You never know who comes. Shout out to Wild Cherry Pepsi. Shout out to Ciroc. They got the new spritzes. Hold up. Let me see this shit, man, because... Puff, uh, he found a way to spit, uh, pay the bills. It's vodka spritz. Vodka spritz, which is good as hell. I had one the other day. And it's packaged so incredibly. Um, listen, let your darkest moments bring your most clarity. Meaning, you go through anything in life. If your so-called friends... Your family ain't there for you. They ain't the ones. And guess what? Blood don't just make you family. I have some friends that ain't blood that are more family than family. You get it? And so let your darkest moments bring your most clarity. And put God first. We got a lot of Muslims on here. You know, Catholics on here, Jews on here, everybody together. And so what I do know is that everybody is trying to be righteous. Everybody's trying to do the right thing. Everybody's trying to help each other, help their family, bless their family. That's what I'm talking about. Positivity, helping others. That's, that's what I'm about. You know, I don't go to church like that. I do sometimes, but I don't go to church like that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm praying to God every day, several times. I pray for you. Shout out my brother Pretty Lewis. Moms is in the hospital. I'm going to pray for her. So legendary tonight. And hope she make it out because moms is strong. Moms is strong. And so I'm going to pray for her. But I pray for you guys. Pray for me. Pray for Joe Crack. If you love the fat Joe, talk that shit with you. If you love the fat Joe, whatever the case may be, Pray for me. Pray for me. I mean it. Peace, y'all. We the biggest in the game.